Channing Curtis is live out there right now with one of the organizers for tonight's protest. Hey, Channing. Hey, Aaron, that's right. The actual meeting doesn't start for another 30 minutes, but as you can see, people have are out here chanting, demanding that the name of Robert E. Lee High School be changed. Now, I'm going to come over here right now with one of the event organizers, Ricky Gardner. He is the pastor at Bethel Bible Hope in Tyler. Pastor Gardner, how's it going? Doing well. well. Good. So now I know a lot of people saw the Facebook group that you guys created asking folks to come out here demanding the name of Robert E. Lee High School be changed. Why do you think that's so important to do right now? Well, I think it's always been important that that be done. Uh, so I think it's far, long overdue that that happened. But I think that there is no better time. There has no, been no better time in our nation uh, than right now because of the heightened level of awareness that's going on around racism and everything uh, surrounding that, that right now is an ideal time. That I don't think it needs to be delayed any longer. I think it needs to happen now. And as somebody who's grown up in Tyler, gone to TISD schools, a pastor here, what do you think the outcome is going to be? You know this community. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I think the outcome uh, will be positive. I think uh, the uh, feeling and the sentiment in our community right now is heavily in favor of this happening. And I don't think the school board will be able to ignore the outcry from all the people. I think that something will happen. I think that it will happen. All right. I'm very optimistic that it will happen. Yeah. Okay, I thank you and everybody else, too, <laughs> based on the chance. Yes. All right, thank you so much, Pastor yes. Gardner. All right, so like we said, the meeting actually doesn't get started until 7 o'clock. People have already lined up to speak for tonight's meeting. I'll have another wrap-up of what happens at the school board meeting tonight at 10 o'clock. Until then, I'll send things back to you, Aaron and Tyler. Channing Curtis, CBS 19. It's safe to say there are a lot of questions that can pop up on Super Tuesday, so we brought in a special guest to help explain things. Joining us now is Dr. John Barrett from Laternal University, Assistant Professor of Political Science, and definitely an expert in today's happenings. How are you doing, Dr. Good. Good. Thank you for joining us. So now, just to start things off, you saw um, what Senator Cornyn had to say. He was talking about coronavirus, but of course he is in a pretty contested race with, what is it, 12 uh, Democratic candidates all vying for a seat to be able to be on that November ballot. What do you think about his race? Hey, so I'm here in Longview off of Eden and Leduc, just a few blocks off of 259. And this neighborhood is almost impossible to get in or out of because of this right here. Uprooted trees are completely blocking streets and cutting off parts of one part of the neighborhood from another. Now, as you can see right here, the downed trees aren't the only problem. Another big thing, the downed power line. Channing Curtis. Uh, Channing, what are you asking for this year for Christmas? Well, I'm asking, I know Aaron wants um, some more Reese's peanut butter cups uh, for the office and some more coffee, some more cake cups. Um, I know he wants those. I'm asking for him. Good weather for Joel. I see I'm looking out for everybody. And uh, for me personally, I just want some shoes. Shoes. Yeah. Santa, do you think she was a good girl this year? Does she get all those things you know, she asked for? She has been so good that we haven't even had to put an elf on her shelf to keep track of her. <laughs> Good. I've been good all year round. See, you see me, my jingle bells on. Yeah. Well, guys, if you take a look behind me, you can see just how extensive the damage is to this country club in Kemp. But neighbors tell me that the most important thing is that they're all coming together to help one another out. So now, um, how long will this event be going on? So this will go on through December the 29th. So mm -hmm. we're closed on Mondays. It's our one day we're closed. Mm -hmm. um, that's We need a little bit of rest. Of uh, Santa's elves need a break. Uh, but we're here, and we're ready to celebrate Christmas with everyone. It's going to take crews quite some time to be able to clean up all of this debris. So when you're driving around town, make sure that you watch out for any downed limbs, trees, and especially downed power lines. Well, listen up, Smith County residents. That proposed property tax rate increase we've been talking about all this summer, well, the commissioners approved it and the upcoming fiscal year's budget today. CBS 19's Peyton Whiteman breaks it all down for us and tells us about the impact on Smith County. Well, it's kind of interesting because Jerry Jones is know known for being kind of tricky when it mm -hmm. comes to these situations. And he's done similar things with coaches in the past where all of a sudden sources heard that the coach was no longer with the team. And then it took a little while before the Cowboys actually confirmed it. So I would not be surprised. I don't think it's going to be one of those that the Cowboys all of a sudden come back on and say like, oh, no, we're keeping Jason Garrett. I don't see that okay. really happening. I just think that they're trying to weigh their options and do this in the best way possible. I nice. think that's what they're doing, but yeah. A little sneakiness in, a little, in between. A little trickery here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide is the second leading cause of death in people between the ages of 15 and 29, according to the World Health Organization. So it's important to know some of the warning signs. Things like talking about feeling hopeless or having no reason to live, increased use of drugs or alcohol, withdrawing or isolating themselves from others or activities that they previously enjoyed, or even talking about wanting to die. 
Now, if you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts, there are plenty of free confidential resources. In health news, a new treatment is changing lives of kids born with a rare genetic disease. Doctors are finding that giving the treatment when patients are infants seems to be the key to helping them develop like typical children. Jacqueline Laura shows us how it works. I magically mm. showed up with some donuts. Now, here's the funny thing, though. Aaron Baker. I knew you were going to call me out for this. You don't like donuts. We were uh, talking about this earlier. He said he, don't, he doesn't like donuts, and I was wondering, I was like, if I just have donuts here, just what, eating would them? you eat them? I would eat like, one. I, here's the thing. It's with bagels, too. I just don't understand them. There's so many <laughs> carbs. Just, I like donuts. <laughs> coming with me. Just, just Thanks, taking Joel. them away. I just, I don't get them. I feel like there's so many carbs in one donut. It takes like 12 to fill up. So I'm like, I can have like a pound of brisket or I can eat like 42 donuts. And like, I, it just doesn't seem Eat the 42 donuts. I, but or I what I if like you had half a pound of brisket and ate like, I don't know, 21 donuts? Mm, I like that. I was a little- Split the difference. Uh, good call, good you know? call. That's why I like you. This is why, yeah. Everything in moderation. But speaking of, if you're trying to stay away from those sugary sweets this year, Chipotle can hook you up with some healthier options. The restaurant chain will offer a salad mix at stores across the country. Now, they're launching what's called Lifestyle Bowls. The mix contains romaine, baby kale, and baby spinach. Now, this mix replaces the existing romaine-only salad. Producer Libby and I love our kitties, and we're pretty lucky that Sphinx and Parker are so photogenic. But it's not always easy to get the perfect picture. Tonight, we want to introduce you to a guy who's mastered the art of photographing pets. Take a look. So here's what some of you had to say is the reason for the decline. Teresa Hawkins said, they tend to exclude kids who work hard and show up for practice and tryouts, but are not the best athletes or are just learning the sport. A little inclusion could go a long way. And T. Barry Vick had several reasons, including how expensive activities are. For years, Juneteenth was really just a day that was celebrated by black people in Texas. But this year, people all over the country are taking notice. A lot of people are educating themselves about the history of race and racism in the United States. And Juneteenth plays a really big role in that. On January 1st, 1863, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, saying that all persons held as slaves should be free. However, it took more than two years for that news to reach Texas. Juneteenth commemorates the day, uh, June 19th, 1865, whenever General Gordon Granger came to Galveston and um, announced that uh, the slaves were free. Texas was on the outer edge of the Confederacy and um, the Union Army didn't arrive, um, for the most part, in Texas until June of 65. General Granger issued Order Number 3, informing the state's 250,000 slaves that they were, in fact, free. Technically, they were the last ones, the last state to officially be notified uh, that they were free. Thus, starting the recognition of Juneteenth. There was celebrations, not as in East Texas, but in Austin, they were celebrating as early as 66, uh, 67. So we do know that pretty early on throughout the state, it was being celebrated as a holiday um, by African Americans. In 1980, June 19th was declared a state holiday here in Texas. And this year, dozens of major corporations, including Target, Nike, and even our parent company, Tegna, are declaring Juneteenth as a company holiday. It has uh, rose to a new height of, uh, of awareness uh, in as much it has already been spreading across the country before now. But with all of the recent events and racial unrest in the country, t uh, people are giving more attention to it. Larry Wade is the founder and president of the National African American Historical Society. Right here, we have uh, over 100 and some African American history books. Normally, there's a parade in Tyler to commemorate Juneteenth. But since that's unable to happen this year due to social distancing guidelines, Wade suggests taking the day to learn more about the history and contributions black people have made to this country. We would need as much emphasis on black history if we would have been included in the history books uh, in the beginning. Then that's part of the reason why Carter G. Woodson started African uh, uh, Black History Week, which expanded later into Black History Month. And uh, we have these type of celebration, Juneteenth, another time when we can recognize the achievement of blacks. We've got you covered, East Texas. Channing Curtis, CBS 19. So producer Libby and I love sharing stories about East Texans making the world a better place. Today, I met a young lady in Palestine who is one of those people. She's proof that people with disabilities can do anything they set their minds to. Take a look. She's a great employee. I think she's our only employee that hasn't missed a day over the past year. <laughs> she's always on time, always willing to do her work, always willing to learn new things. Katie has Down syndrome, but that's not stopping her from living out her dream of working at a doctor's office. Why do you like helping people? The soccer, 
The what? Suckers. She likes to go ah. <laughs> She was in high school when I started nursing school, and um, she was always just fascinated with doctor's offices. She loves going to the doctor. Katie's sister Betty is a nurse at a pediatrician's office in Palestine. When a job at the facility opened up, they both jumped at the chance. Katie has been working at the office almost a year and has already been given even more tasks. We've gone from basic clerical work to now she's actually helping manage our, our office deposits and kind of manage you know, part of the money that comes in and out of the office. Dr. Michael Garcia says making sure people with disabilities are treated equally really hits home for him. We have a four-year-old with Down syndrome, so I've been really involved with the disability community and uh, providing equal access to education and to meaningful employment and to meaningful living in the general uh, society. He says everyone needs to do their part to make sure people with disabilities are treated equally. All individuals with disabilities deserve a chance to, to participate in our community and to participate in schools, in the workforce, and in all aspects of our community. Katie says she likes working for a doctor because she wants to help people. Sounds like a good reason to me.